There's a woman uh, from Denmark, I believe, who has a shop that I've been watching for years. And she started on YouTube, but now she's doing Instagram. And the shop is called Sugar Charm Shop. And she makes the most amazing miniatures with the longest nails I've ever seen. Uh, she, she was a nail artist, I think, originally, and she went into miniatures. She's astounding. However, I don't know how she does it with the nails. So it brings me to the point of, I had long nails. They have to go. If I have made one crescent mark, I have made 400 crescent marks in this Freddy head since I began, so I had to cut them off. So there's that. We will go from here uh, with various stages of the sculpting. Right here I'm starting with his eye, his other eye. Uh, I was trying to make it easier for you to see what I was doing, so I tried two different camera angles, and the first one resulted in a 20-minute video of the back of my head, so that didn't work. And the second one, I tried to put the camera right in front of myself uh, and get a closer look, but a big portion of that wound up out of frame. So from what I was able to recoup, here's the rest of the sculpting uh, to date, and I hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
so after um, a lot of cleanup with um, my razor blade, my X-Acto knife to get all the lint and um, some smoothing with some alcohol and additional cleaning, uh, we're almost ready for the first bake. Um, I'm going to be adding his mustache as a, a clay base, but I, pro I will probably add mohair later to actually make it look like a, f a, f a hairy mustache. <laughs> um, I think all of the dimensions with the dem a divider and my guidelines, they all pretty much match. Uh, it's kind of hard to see uh, without his teeth. His teeth is such a defining characteristic. Um, I think that's going to bring it really home. Um, then I have to, before I bake him the first time, I want to determine where the ear holes are going to be. So uh, what I do is I use, again, the divider. Um, and I determine, you know, for how far from the front of his nose to where the ear canal might be. And then kind of figure out how that's a little bit lower than his eye line. The middle of his ear comes, like, right under his eye line. So I do the same thing on the head. I just kind of figure out uh, where it's hard to do <laughs> being able to see. Well, I, I measure from here to where I think that is and make a hole on this side. And uh, I use my uh, this tool here and I just kind of widen it up and make a hole. And what I do to determine to get the other one in the same place on the other side is I usually stick a straight pin or a hat pin or any kind of pin in here. And so I know where that one is there and I know where it is how far back, back on the head. And again, I kind of determine where between his nose length and that ear hole will be, make a little hole, widen it, widen it up with this, and then uh, I have another pin and I will put that in here. And if you see, they are more or less equal. You may have to make this one just a tiny bit tad lower. They are kind of equal to the back of the head. You know, this one's leaning back, but equal to the back of the head. And that's about right. If I look at the picture of his face, his ears, where the middle of his ear would be, kind of goes right under his eye here. So if I look at this, it's the same thing. The middle of his ear kind of goes under his eye. So that's uh, that's where we're at. I'm going to clean this up a little more with alcohol and do a little smoothing, and then I'm going to use um, Sculpey Clay Softener uh, which and, and brush the whole thing down. And that will remove any possible fingerprints and give it a nice matte finish when it bakes. And I'll bake this um, and be back. I'm using a little bit of alcohol on a brush to get any obvious dings or finger marks. And this is just alcohol. I haven't gotten to the final smoothing with the... Um, Sculpey Clay Softener. But this kind of helps to get it to more of a polished finish. It's kind of the boring part, you know, the, we're at the end where every little thing I do is such a tiny little change that it's almost impossible to, to see what I'm doing. Um, I, you know, I move the eyelids a little bit and, and uh, add little beans of, you know, tiny little beads of, of uh, clay into areas. I've pushed his, uh, pushed his cheeks to be a little flatter and coming out this way a little bit more. Um, I gave him a little bit more, I don't know if you can see it, you need a kind of a shadow, but I gave him a little bit more of a dimple on this side, which he has a dimple right there. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, little, little tiny 
movements at this point, but I'm hoping and I'm pretty satisfied with how um, it's turning out likeness-wise. Like I said, um, painting and putting his teeth in, I think his teeth are the biggest thing that, you know, really <laughs> bring Freddy home. So, you know, he may need, um, the way I'm looking at it now, if you look here, it's kind of where the ears are, it's kind of thin back here, so after the bake I may thicken out, you know, thick his head, make his head a little bit wider through here, um, through here, just to make the ears stick out more, but his ears also are kind of laid back, so I just, I won't be able to determine that until after I have a hard head to work with and I don't have to worry about destroying anything I've already done. Some people don't like to use a alcohol or any kind of solvent on the clay, but I always have. Uh, I like the finish that it gives it. It kind of slightly melts the top layer and gives more of a matte finish. Although the you know the clay softener will do that as well when it bakes, but um, it's just the way I've done it. There's no right or wrong way to do a sculpt. Um, it's what you're used to. Uh, you know, I see people that. We'll start with a big block of clay and go negative to take the pieces out until they get to where they are. I don't work that way. I, I, my brain doesn't work that way. So what I do is I build up from nothing to something and, and, uh, and then move that around until it resembles, hopefully resembles the person I'm trying to do. So, um, you know, there is no right or way, right or wrong way to sculpt. Everybody has their own methods. All I'm showing you are how I do it. Um, I'm looking forward to, um, you know, trying to do different things, trying to try different ways. Um, but, like I said, when you get comfortable with your tools and you get comfortable with the way you're doing things and it and it works successfully for you, it's like, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's, that's basically where you're at. And um, I always experiment. Um, you know, I, I've never done a sculpt with facial hair before. So rather than just glue his mustache on completely, I'm going to give it a base of clay just so that it stands out the way his does. And same thing with the hair. I think I'm going to sculpt some of his hair, not as thick as it normally is. And over that, I'm going to add uh, a mohair, uh, a glued mohair. Not wig, but, you know, they call it trolling when you glue hair right to a head, but that's what I'm going to be doing. Um... You know that may change by the time I get to it, but we'll see. I don't. I I like his hairline to be. You know, since his hair is slicked back in this particular iteration of him, um, I want to be able to see the hairline at the front. And doing that with clay, with the addition of hair, will make it. I think look a lot more natural than just a, a glued hairline uh, of mohair on there. The you know you need to have something. Um, to make that hairline blend into the scalp and not just look like a cut edge. So that's, these, these are just my thoughts. Uh, I'm just talking while I'm brushing and uh, hoping every, hoping for the best. Uh, um, I'm really pleased. Um, like I said, it's, sometimes it's hard to see where you're going or where, you know, where your sculpture is at. And I am, um, I know that when I put those teeth in, it's going to help a lot. He just looks gummy right now. But um, I think we're doing good. And so I think it's time to bake, and I will be back.
Lint. Demon Lint. I'm using some alcohol on my fingers right now just to push some structures. Like he has a very very definite line of shadow. His skull is kind of, you know, squared off right here and here. So I'm trying to do that. Freddie has the most amazing nose I've ever seen. Um, when you look at it from this angle, it's straight. When you look at it from this angle, he has a lump. Uh, it kind of goes up straight, and then it curves to the right. And it's, <laughs> from every angle, his nose is different. So that was a real challenge. Uh, I think I got it. I'm happy with it. So there's that. And his nostrils are very uneven, but when you look straight on at them, they look even. But they're very uneven from the side. They're two, two very different nostrils. And, and unless you get those little tiny features, those, those little quirks, if you try to make something perfect and symmetrical, it's not going to look like the person because <laughs> nobody's symmetrical, and especially not Freddie Mercury. He's got a very asymmetrical face. His, um, this side of his face is uh, wider, very slightly, and um, he, this part of his jaw, it's hard to see, but this part of his jaw comes forward and is rounded more, and this part of his jaw comes down and is cu cuts in this way a little bit more. Um, he, it's, it's really, he's so asymmetrical, it's amazing. But those are the things that create a likeness. Um, I wish you could see. I have not very good shadows here on this. Um, it's very hard to see the... Well, anyway. I'm pretty happy. I think I got his jawline pretty well. Uh, I got his cheek lines pretty well. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm happy.